Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now Live at 4. It is Friday. <laughs> That's Michael Bruno. He's happy it's Friday, and he's coming up in just a little while. Yeah, we had a little sun this morning yeah. and that, after a long, dreary week, but now clouds are sort of filled in again. That's because I washed my car today, so of course now it's going to rain momentarily. <laughs> yeah, it's my fault, yeah. We'll but it was nice to see the yeah. sun. We'll get to the weather in just a bit, but first, if your commute home takes you down Verona Road, you've definitely noticed some delays at the PD intersection. We're asking the DOT why it's taking so long for the stoplights to change. We'll join Madeline O'Neill there live in just a moment. Our own Neil Heinen got a chance to talk with Governor Tony Evers about his meeting with Foxconn CEO yesterday. Today, we'll hear if the meeting eased his skepticism over the company's jobs promises. And Wisconsin has dodged the measles outbreak so far, but for anyone who was vaccinated in the 1960s, experts say you might need a booster to keep you safe. Let's take a look outside today. It was very nice earlier. Boy, everything, it's like we flipped a switch yeah, and everything is bright green. Everything's getting green. It's, well, it's May. It's about time, <laughs> right? A nice weekend are the weather words, and Chris Reese is in the backyard where the clouds have moved in. That's right, the clouds have moved in, but fear not, they are going to move out for some sunshine as we move into Saturday. In the meantime, we've watched that cloud cover today. It's kept us a little bit colder than we should be as well. Typically, we see our highs right around 64 for this time of the year, but we only made it to 59 because just as we were starting to warm up, those clouds moved on in and well, yep, they kept those temperatures into the upper 50s. 59 is where we sit right now. Some folks just to the west did make it towards 60. The reason for that, they actually had a little bit more sunshine today because we were underneath some cloud cover that was influenced by a lake breeze coming off of Lake Michigan. Still in the 50s right now. Winds are calm though, so there's really not much of a breeze, which means it actually still feels fairly pleasant outside, even though those temperatures are in the mid 50s for a lot of folks And the entire upper Midwest is still seeing fairly uniform temperatures being in the 50s and low 60s a little bit warmer across western Minnesota and parts of Nebraska. That warmer air is going to be coming towards us as we go through the weekend and we've already seen a temperature rise over the past 24 hours and tomorrow I think we'll also see warmer temperatures in the next 24 hours. So that's the general thing to be mindful of. But yes, we are watching the clouds along with uh, the possibility of a few showers. I do think most folks are going to stay dry going through uh, probably the rest of tonight, but we're going to watch those showers back to the west. Hopefully Susan's car washing didn't mess things up too much, but uh, I do think most of us will be able to stay dry as we plan the next couple of hours. Just plan on cloud cover being around and then temperatures falling into the 40s overnight tonight and then into tomorrow. Let's go ahead and get you set up with traffic. This is the Beltline at University and the west side of the Beltline is moving pretty well. No big issues showing up there, but as you start to get towards that southern stretch, typically between Verona Road and John Nolan, and of course, we are seeing those backups, especially in the eastbound direction. But Friday rush hour is just getting started, so expect more and more slowdowns to begin to pop up. I'll be tracking those as we go through the show. Some additional brake lights showing up downtown on the Isthmus right now as well, guys. It's a Friday. All right, Chris. It is thank a Friday. You, uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And speaking of traffic, first at four, getting around during rush hour is already a pain, but throwing construction into the mix and it become a real headache. Drivers say they've noticed wait times double or even tripling at the intersection of Verona Road and Highway PD. As rush hour gets started today, we'll join our Madeline O'Neill, who's there live. Maddie? Hi, Susan and Mark. You can definitely tell rush hour is getting started here. We're seeing some backups, and commuters tell us that once they stop at this intersection of McKee or Highway PD and Verona Roads, it can take up to 10 minutes to get through that intersection. Now, that's partly because only one lane of traffic can turn left at a time. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation tells us that's because with the new larger configuration of the intersection, there's just too much space for two lanes of cars to turn left at the same time safely. Now, despite the increased traffic times, regulars are still making it to Monkey Shines Bar and Grill, located right near the busy intersection. Your 7.30 to your 9, and then from your 4 to 6, it's just amazingly crazy out there. I'm surprised there hasn't been a lot of accidents, but people at least have slowed down enough and know that just to take it easy, and you know, it's going to take time. So. 
The DOT tells us they've been constantly monitoring the volume of cars at the intersection and adjusting the configuration of lights as needed. Now they say they think they're actually at a good spot now, but we'll continue watching this intersection to see if any potential improvements can be made. But there's really not too much you can do during rush hour. The main message for drivers right now is to be patient, plan some extra time in near commutes, or look up alternate routes. You can find that on the DOT's website. We'll have that on our website as well. Madeline O'Neill reporting live. Maddie, thanks. A group of people in Monroe had to be evacuated from their homes this morning due to a gas leak. It happened in the 600 block of 18th Avenue. That's near the hospital. The Monroe Fire Department and we energy crews were able to get the leak capped by noon. We cannot confirm if those people are allowed back in their homes at this time. In western Wisconsin, 40 landowners are suing to frack sand mines over health concerns. The plaintiffs say the mines are filling their homes with dust, polluting wells, and driving down property values. Four separate lawsuits have been filed against a Texas-based company that owns the facilities in Whitehall and Blair. The landowners are seeking monetary compensation, medical testing, and treatment if necessary. The former house director of a UW-Madison sorority is accused of embezzling more than $225,000 from the group over a period of six years. Madison police issued an arrest warrant for 61-year-old Pamela Dorton. Officials say she was fired from her job at Delta 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 in early 2016 for violating her contract. According to a complaint, student leaders at the Tridelt House later suspected that she had been making unauthorized purchases on a sorority credit card. Dorton is facing charges of theft and fraudulent writings. The current measles outbreak could be dangerous for some people who were vaccinated in the 1960s. The first measles vaccine came along in 1963, but medical experts say even when those first vaccine recipients, uh, those first ones may not be in the clear. First five years of the vaccine, some batches of it were not very good. None of us really know which batch we got. Doctors say you can get your blood tested to find out or for a cheaper option, get the measles booster. So far this year, the Centers for Disease Control has confirmed 704 cases. That is the largest number since measles was declared eradicated in the U.S. in 2000. Most cases have been in unvaccinated children. Kids under five and adults over 20 are more likely to suffer severe complications. To Washington, D.C., now President Trump says he complied with the Mueller investigation and is pushing back against Democratic-led investigations on Capitol Hill. He doesn't want former White House counsel Don McCann to comply with the subpoena to testify and turn over court documents. Mr. Trump has filed lawsuits to block subpoena requests for his tax returns and Trump business records. He says he assumes Mueller reviewed those returns during his investigation, but Democrats aren't sure. The House Judiciary Committee is asking Mueller to come and testify. You have an opportunity tomorrow to pick up a piece of Rock County history. Black Hawk Community Credit Union will be handing out bricks from the Janesville GM plant that was demolished last year. Each brick will come with a certificate of authenticity. Each car that goes through the bank's drive through from 1 to 4 on Saturday can get two free bricks, but you can go through the line as many times <laughs> as you want. Governor Tony Evers says he trusts Foxconn now that he knows their short-term plans. He says employees he's interacted with seem to be honorable people with good intentions. Amanda Quintana is here with more on what he says about the 2020 election as well. Amanda? Yes, well, Governor Evers says the job is going well and expanding Medicaid is still a top priority for him. But a big topic of conversation was Foxconn since Evers met with the Foxconn CEO, Terry Goh, for the first time this week. He called it a meet and greet primarily focused on relationship building since Goh is moving out of the daily operations to run for president of Taiwan. Evers was asked if he trusts Foxconn. Certainly the people I have dealt with, the answer is yes. Uh, my goal with dealing with Foxconn has always been around issues of accountability and transparency. And I think we have helped shape that to some extent. We, we know now that uh, what, what their present plans are, at least for the immediate present. 
He says although there are some clarity, there is some clarity about the company's short-term plans in Racine County, he will continue to monitor the company. He wants them to be as transparent as possible, especially about their environmental standards. As for the 2020 presidential race, he says he will not endorse anyone before the primary, but he will tell them all you cannot just come to Wisconsin once since this will be a key state. Now you can see the full episode of For the Record here on WISC TV <laughs> Sunday at 1030. All right, Amanda, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. If you're planning some spring cleaning this weekend, chances are you might have some old electronics and appliances that you're tempted to toss. But before you do that, how about getting them back in working order instead? I sat down with a local repairman who can save you some money. That's next at 4. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4. is at an almost 50-year low, falling to 3.6%. 263,000 jobs were added last month, and wages are up too. The average hourly worker makes 3.2% more than a year ago. The construction and healthcare industry saw the most growth in April. Retail and auto manufacturing jobs uh, saw in those areas saw jobs disappear. And those numbers led to a rally on Wall Street. The Dow Industrials added 197 points to end the week at 26,504. The Nasdaq Composite Index was up 127, and the S&P 500 gained 28 for a record close. Well, increasingly, we are becoming a throwaway society, especially when it comes to electronics and small appliances. This is a startling statistic. Last year, the city of Madison alone collected more than 326 
tons of electronics. Some of it gets recycled, but the rest of it ends up in the landfill. But it, always, it wasn't always like that. There was a time when we got things fixed, and those days are not completely gone. Toasters, blenders, old clocks, every day they're dropped off at Madison's East and West Side Large Items Recycling Center. If it has a plug on it, it ends up here. Tons and tons of it. We've become a throwaway society fueled by manufacturers' planned obsolescence. But there is another option. How about getting it fixed instead? Do you know where everything is in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. More or less. <laughs> it's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, but it's been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Kiefer Appliance. Wayne Kiefer and his son Kip you know. fixed things from a mostly pre-digital era. The business started on State Street 75 years ago, repairing shavers and fountain it's pens. Actually. It's a fun business. We meet a lot of weird people, but we <laughs> meet a lot of good people, too. <laughs> Wayne bought the business in 1982 and moved it to this Monona location 35 years ago. That's when people fixed things. We had about four employees at one time, plus myself. And uh, that's, that's when it was in its heyday, and we fixed a lot of things. But that's when you could fix toaster ovens and mixers and all this little stuff that it's just non-repairable now. Nobody wants to fix it. And some new appliances can't be fixed. The manufacturers make sure of that. The companies don't sell any parts for any of the new appliances. I can't even get beaters for Sunbeam mixers that are more than five, six years old. So if the beaters go bad, if you break a beater, you throw the whole machine out and go buy a new one. The Kiefer say it's a generational thing. Most of their customers are older. It's got to be between 60 and 70, most of the customers. Yeah. People who lived through a time where you had to get stuff fixed or you went without. Yeah. The, the people that went through the Depression in the 30s, boy, I'll tell you, they're in here trying to get anything fixed. But the younger people, no. Business these days is pretty steady. This shop is almost one of a kind. The next closest one like it is in St. Louis. So Wayne and Kip have customers all over the country thanks to their website. It's probably just needs a good cleaning. As long as it's still running, I can probably clean it and oil it and it'll work again. Okay. So, oh, we get that a lot. <laughs> oh, you can fix this? Yeah, we can do it. Sometimes. <laughs> well, that's got to be pretty satisfying. It is. It is. Uh, and the and thing's, thing's almost always the older people that are always yeah, real yeah. gratified that they can get I, something fixed yet. Saving grandma's old mixer or lamp or clock the old-fashioned way. Fixing it. And keeping it out of the landfill. And the shop is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 5. You can check out their website at Kiefer Appliance Madison, all one word, dot com. I think that's incredible. Yeah, it really is. Now, what about digital stuff like computers no, or phones? No, they, they don't do things no, like that. No, they can't that. do that. It's, it's, you know, mechanical stuff and right. coffee makers and yeah. mixers and blenders. That's a real skill it to really be is. able to do things like and that. Unfortunately, his son Kip is going to continue the business. Oh, that's great. That's, and where are they? Where are they Monona located? Drive. Monona Drive. Yeah. Okay, good to know. All right, next at four is a pretty incredible rescue story out of Florida. How two teenagers who were stranded at sea while celebrating the end of the school year had their prayers answered. That story when News 3 Now Live at 4 continues.
Well, take a look at this. One man's idea of cashing in on the Kentucky Derby winning success is a lot of crap. That's literally the idea behind artist Coleman Larkin's unique venture. His souvenirs from the 1997 Derby winner Silver Charm are going for $200 a jar. Which brings up the question, firstly, why? And more importantly, why? <laughs> You can find them at Kentucky for Kentucky, a mall specializing in eccentric local wares. And while $200 may seem steep for this particular product, part of the proceeds go to Silver Charms Farm, so pricey poo purchasing patrons can rest easy. This is a Kentucky story for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> this next story is incredible. Two teenagers were celebrating Senior Skip Day with a trip to the beach in Florida when a dip in the ocean turned into a fight for their lives. 17-year-olds Heather Brown and Tyler Smith were swimming when the current became too strong and swept them out to sea. They were stranded in the water for two hours and started to pray. I cried out. I was like, if you really do have a plan for us, just like, come on, just bring something. Then a boat pulled up to come to their rescue. It was called Amen. The team say there is the teens say there is no other explanation in the world other than God. That's a pretty incredible story. Well, an Oklahoma woman is celebrating a big milestone, her 105th birthday. Yeah, Lois Wooten was honored at the state's capitol this week and had some advice to share with all of us. I ate a lot of Kentucky fried chicken and <laughs> Twinkies. <laughs> Don't tell me that. You can't tell me that. Lois <laughs> added great. that she also ate plenty of frozen dinners because who cares? She roared through the roaring 20s, learned to drive on a Model T, and lived through both world wars. And for someone who has lived the majority of her life without a computer, she now loves technology and says that all she does is text on her iPhone. <laughs> Good for her. I know. Staying young right there. What is it? French fries and... Kentucky Fried Chicken and Twinkies. <laughs> there, there's hope for the rest of us. Yeah. There's hope. Yeah. You know, speaking of Kentucky, of course, it's Derby weekend. Right. Yes. This is going to be the first year that I haven't gotten to watch the Derby. Um, oh, you've been, because to you've been to I've never been to oh, one, okay. but it's, see, in Kentucky, if you're from Kentucky, you don't go to the Derby, you watch the Derby. Uh -huh. You have a Derby party at your house while everybody else goes to the Derby. Um, and so typically that's what I've done, but I've got an event tomorrow, so I'm not able to actually watch the Derby oh, for the first time ever. But you'll see me singing my old Kentucky. <laughs> the old Kentucky. Sure. Yeah. Somewhere. Chances to rain there. But I do think our weekend is going to look just a little bit better than the Derby forecast. I'll have your forecast for what you can expect here in Wisconsin coming up.
Well, temperatures today were kept a little bit cooler thanks to the cloud cover that we had in place. Normally, we'll see those highs right around 64 today. We only saw them around 59. Just as we were starting to warm up, that cloud cover moved in and well, that kept those temperatures in check. 56 degrees right now. Winds are calm. We still do have a lot of cloud cover right now, not just here in Madison, but really across all of southern Wisconsin. Other temperatures are Still close to 60 in some spots. Lone Rock and Boscobel both with a six and a zero. Janesville at 55, and things are still a little bit colder as you work your way over towards the lakeshore. This is where temperatures, folks, have actually not budged out of the upper 40s today just because we've had a lake breeze keeping those spots a little bit colder. In fact, here's another view of that lake breeze. You see how winds are calm for us, right? But then you work your way towards Lake Michigan, and that's where we have that east wind anywhere from about, say, 10 to 15 miles miles per hour right along that lake and that's what actually helped promote some of the cloud cover that we saw this afternoon. So watch the beginning of this loop sunny right along the lake shore, but then the air rises after it comes off the lake and then that led to some cloud cover development. That's why we got cloudy this afternoon and then more clouds started to stream in from the south and west. This is actually a disturbance coming out of parts of Iowa and Minnesota as we speak. There's also some shower activity associated with that as well. Some lightning and thunder to the west of Minneapolis and then some shower activity across eastern Iowa and northern Illinois as we speak. We do have dry air over us here in Wisconsin. So notice how as this started to move into southern Wisconsin, it fell apart. It was eaten up by that dry air. And that's why I do think we have a better chance to stay dry, folks, as we go through the rest of this afternoon. High pressure staying in control for us. In the meantime, we've had a stationary front that has been situated across the Ohio Valley for days upon days. That's brought us all of these rain chances. Well, this high is finally starting to push that towards the south and east. At the same time, another weak front slowly moving in from the north. That's what's bringing those showers to parts of Minnesota right now. That's going to put the brakes on too, and then we're going to see more wet weather begin to impact us as we move through Sunday. But here are those temperatures showing you just where the warmer temperatures are. 70s as far north or as far, you know, just as close to us as Cincinnati. So not all that far away. In the meantime, you get towards Chicago. That's where the 50s start to show up. So we're still on the northern side of that boundary. But folks, here's how our weather pattern is going to be changing in time. Ultimately, our jet stream is still rocking and rolling across the Pacific. As it does so, it's bringing in systems. So there is a region of low pressure out over the southern Pacific. That's going to move in just south of the desert southwest and then curve northward towards the Great Lakes. This is the pattern that we're going to see as we go through the next several days. That does mean look for more rain chances showing up. Here's Saturday, most of that rain to our south. We should stay mostly dry on Saturday. And then this is where Derby is in Kentucky. Lots of rainfall expected for them while we should see more sunshine. As we head into Sunday, though, those rain chances do return and we're going to see more rain chances on Tuesday and Wednesday. We put that in motion into Thursday and Friday, and that's the pattern we're dealing with. So this next couple of days, that is where we are going to see most of our dry weather and it soaked that up because as we get into the week ahead, we do have upwards of two to three inches of rain that could fall between Sunday and Friday. So it's spread out over the course of a week, but nonetheless, things are certainly going to be wet for a lot of folks as we go through the week ahead, along with chances of lightning and thunder. So if you plan on washing your car, uh, do it now and maybe you'll get a dry couple of days to enjoy that washed car before it gets dirty again. Um, or if you're like me, just clean out the inside of your car, make the inside of your car look really nice, like it's brand new, and you feel like you are driving in a brand new car. Meanwhile, on the outside, um, it is just as dirty as all get out. But as long as the inside looks good, I feel good about it. There you go, the forecast um, and car care tips. Yeah, there we go. And, and the derby forecast. Yes, absolutely. And the derby oh, forecast, I don't know if anyone's into horse racing, but nonetheless. A lot of people are. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's on my bucket list. I'd love right. to go there sometime. And Chris will keep us up to date all weekend long on the weather, and then a new Three now Sunday morning. Stay tuned for CBS Sunday morning with Martha Teicher. Martha Teichner is filling in for Jane Pauley this Sunday morning with a special money edition of CBS Sunday morning. Martha, good morning to you. Good morning. The money issue is more or less about everything monetary and so on. It's sometimes a little tangentially, but uh, um, somewhat one way or another connected with money. 
And uh, this week we have, uh, speaking of lots of money, uh, Kardashian money. And a rare, rare, rare uh, look at the internal workings of the Kardashian-Jenner empire. Tracy Smith is speaking with Kris Jenner, the, the matriarch of this, this empire. Any person who's, you know, uh, well-known and successful and are on social media, you know, uh, is a target. And do you guys think you're a bigger target because you're a bigger presence on social media? Maybe. But what I do know is, you know, we get up every day with appreciation and love and a work ethic that, you know, is stellar. I guess being a target uh, goes with the name. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a multi, multi, multi million dollar business and billion dollar business for that family. I, I like the term Kardashian money. That is, that is way up there. What else is on the program? The safe cracker that uh, David Pogue visits is uh, cracking safes legally for a living. In fact, there are several of them. My cruise ship piece, I get to go on a cruise ship at CBS's expense for the first time in my life and discover the inner workings of cruise ship design. If you've ever been on a cruise ship and you wonder why you don't see the laundry moving around, because they have a highway in the internal bowels of the ship called I-95 on the ship that we were on, uh, where everything comes and goes and the passengers can't see it. And we go to Sweden, which has become effectively a cashless society. And have you ever thought about moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma? In certain circumstances, Tulsa will pay you $10,000 to move there and do your job, wherever it may be, from Tulsa. How's that for a yeah. variety? <laughs> that is interesting. Did you like the cruise? I did. I was only on the ship for uh, a day and a half, two nights. Boy, oh boy, standing at the window and watching the night and the stars and all the water swishing by. Uh, I could have done that for days and days and days. But, you know, work calls. <laughs> You'll have to go again. We will see you Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Martha, great to talk to you again. Have a good weekend. Thank you. So she go on a longer cruise. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to watch that. Sunday at 8 o'clock. Okay, we're going to head to the movies when Live at 4 continues. When we come back, we'll have a preview of the new rom-com Long Shot when Live at 4 continues.
The world of politics is the backdrop for a new romantic comedy. The storyline pairs a pretty unlikely duo. David Daniel has a preview of Long Shot. Is the Secretary of State looking at us? I kind of know her. It's like kind of knowing a mermaid. Do you tell people that? Seth Rogen is a journalist who discovers his childhood crush is now Secretary of State in Longshot. I used to babysit for him. You babysat for him? Wow, time has not been kind. Charlotte, played by Charlize Theron, throws Fred for a loop. Crack it down! I'm OK! Do police men just call me a cracker? You know, even though it's a comedy and it might be a little bit more laxed on set, you can see how serious Seth takes it, you know, after every scene. Oscar winner Theron goes laugh for laugh with Rogan. I don't embarrass that easily. I don't either, really. What's your favorite sexual position? Normal, front-facing <laughs> normal. What kind of question That's is that? That's all it took, look at you. What, what's your favorite sexual position? Don't be gross, Fred. She's so available as an actress and so jumps into the role that, of course, then seeing that woman on ecstasy is hilarious. Everybody knows Charlize is royalty and she kills it. She also loves the rom in this rom-com. I mean, who wants to follow me around the world and hope I have five minutes to be affectionate? There's not a lot of stories of women not giving up their passion or their drive, their, 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 their job in order to have love. I, I, I don't know of a lot of movies like that, so it's nice to see a woman who doesn't ultimately give all about up, but figures it out. She figures it out with her partner. You gonna ask why I'm still single? No, I get it. <laughs> In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That looks that funny. That looks funny, yeah. And Will, Will Loper is back from vacation. He'll tell us what he thinks of Longshot Monday here on Live at Four. Hollywood is mourning the loss of actor Peter Mayhew, famously known for his portrayal of the giant furry Chewbacca in the Star Wars movies. He was larger than life at seven foot three. His co-star Harrison Ford, who played Han Solo, said we were partners in film and in life for over 30 years, and I loved him. He invested his soul into the character and brought great pleasure to the Star Wars audience. Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, said Mayhew and the lovable character he played shared similar qualities. He just radiated happiness and warmth. He was always up for a laugh. Mayhew died on Tuesday at his home in Texas. He was 74 years old. Iconic role. Yeah, it really is. Well, up next, we're off to see The Wizard with Michael Bruno. He goes backstage at Abundant Life Christian School's production of The Wizard of Oz. That's when Live at Four continues.
And of course, we are keeping an eye on the traffic for folks as you begin to head home on this Friday afternoon. Right now, we're looking at the Beltline and University and things on the west side of town. Honestly, not too bad. You can see the traffic moving along on the west side of the Beltline as we speak. But we are seeing those slowdowns on the south end of town per normal. We're starting to see more brake lights coming off of the Isthmus. Once you get onto the brake line, the heaviest slowdowns are between Verona Road and John Nolan. But for the most part, traffic is moving anywhere from about 25 to 35 miles per hour, so it could be worse. This is actually a little bit better than things looked just a few minutes ago. Then we come down Verona Road, and of course, we are seeing major delays there. Pack your patience as you head home on this Friday. Guys. All right, Chris, thank you. Is Game of Thrones Peter Dinklage working at a small restaurant in Pakistan? Of course not, but Razi Khan, a 26-year-old waiter who serves flatbed and mutton, bears a striking, striking resemblance to Tyrion Lannister in the HBO fantasy series. Khan not only looks like Dinklage, he claims to be the same height, 4 feet 5 inches. Dinklage's Pakistani doppelganger hadn't watched Game of Thrones until the restaurant's owner told him he looked like the famous actor. Word got out on Facebook, and now people are flocking to the restaurant to take selfies with Khan. <laughs> wow. He, How looks, about he, does, that? he does look like him. Yeah, quite <laughs> he really does. Well, based on the iconic 1939 film, the Wizard of Oz musical production debuted on Broadway in 2011. The show uses original songs from the film, as well as some new ones from Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice. Dorothy and the gang, along with the Yellow Brick Road, hit the stage this weekend for a production by the Abundant Life Christian School. Our own wizard, <laughs> Michael Bruno, goes back stage to check it out. And what's it like having to portray a character that so many people have seen the movie and so many people think about the movie first, they think, oh wow, you know, we've seen that movie so many times and we think that's the way that it's gonna be. I actually put off re-watching the movie for a little bit and then I kind of, then I watched the movie so I could kind of compare and try, try to integrate a little bit of the movie in so people kind of get that like, kind of familiar character there, but they also get to see a kind of original piece, I guess, from me. And what's the most difficult part about playing an animal for you? Learning how to uh, stand straight up and look into the audience, but also uh, have an animal persona and be animal-like, but yet sentient at the same time. And what are some of the challenges other than having to corral the star of the yes, show, Toto, yes. here? Yes, <laughs> It's really interesting because I only go backstage a couple times in this show. Uh, most of what I'm doing is going in and out of the aisles and going, uh, when I do go backstage, I'm running downstairs and <laughs> running backstage and quick coming out, trying not to look out of breath. <laughs> I'd say the biggest difference between me and the movie is I'm not an adult, so I can't have this smooth, nice, hoarse, baritone voice that the movie might have. I'm a high schooler. I sound like a tenor all the time. <laughs> What a production. <laughs> Aren't they costumes. amazing? I know. This is a very small school, and the costumes are incredible. They have an amazing army of people that work on them, building the sets on the altar of the church, and those beautiful costumes, and just the, the energy and the love that they all give in these productions there. It's quite amazing. And the level of talent. We always year say after that. Year. Yeah. I know. I know. How they got that little actor to play that dog is amazing. <laughs> it's just, it's astonishing. <laughs> it's so realistic. Yes, that's the costume. <laughs> It's the Wizard of Oz. It's at the City Church Auditorium. It's not in any school or anything. No. It's at 4909 East Buckeye Road. It's May 3rd and 4th this weekend and next weekend, Friday at 730, Saturday at 2 and 730, and go to ALCS, Abundant Life Christian School, dot ticks, dot com. I think someone's calling you on your phone. Oh, it's, it's, it's the Tin Man. <laughs> 
It's Toto! It's Toto! Run, Toto, run! You got the Wicked Witch's phone! All right. On that note, Michael, thank, thank you. Thank you, Michael. We'll see you next week. We'll be right back. This is here, one final check of the forecast, kind of a cloudy night. Yeah, but it's going to stay cloudy as we go through the overnight hours. I do think we'll see some clearing towards morning, but that will be replaced with some patchy fog overnight and temperatures that are going to be into the upper 30s. Now we'll start out the day with some clouds, but then we'll become partly sunny into the afternoon. I can't rule out the chance of a shower, but we'll see those highs in the upper 60s, maybe a low 70 somewhere. Mm. All right, yeah. dry out okay. a little bit. Yeah, hopefully a little, a little dry weather for once That'd on the good. weekend. All right, coming up Monday here on Live Before, we have an exciting announcement from the UW campus. Now listen, if you're a fan of the Union Terrace, you're going to want to tune in. Yeah, don't miss it. And Will Loper is back from vacation. He'll be along to tell us what he thinks of the new romantic comedy, Long Shot. That's Monday on Live at Four.
Well, Lola and Louie have had another very busy week working on the News Hounds report. They have a whale with no name, zoo babies, even traffic for you. Here's this week's edition of the News Hounds Now Update. It's News Hounds Now Update with Lola and Louie. This week on the News Hounds Update, a sea lion goes for a ride. A rare birth in Spain. And a meerkat birthday party. But first, a naming contest has begun for a beluga whale found in a town in the northernmost point in Norway. The whale seems to be tamed. It swims up to the dock and has become an attraction in the fjord with fishermen and others feeding it. The Norway TV network started a naming contest. So far, some of the suggestions are Agent James Beluga, White Russian, and Moby Dick. Whatever name wins out, this beluga whale shows no inclination to go home, wherever that may be. A baby western lowland gorilla clings tightly to its mother as she nurses him at the Valencia, Spain Zoo. The yet-to-be-named male baby was born to mother Ali and father Mombi. Western lowland gorillas are listed as critically endangered, so this little guy is critical for the survival of the species. This little flipper-flapping commuter got lost on a freeway in California. Highway patrol officers say drivers called them after seeing the animal sitting on the side of the 101 freeway near San Francisco. When officers arrived, the sea lion seemed to know the routine. It jumped right into the back of their cruiser and let the officers drive it to an animal shelter. A Marine Mammal Center volunteer says there are indications the sea lion has done this before.